Super Bowl Sunday, an absolutely huge event for many of us. But between the wings and the bear and the gambling and, well, trying to sleep through the alarm clock on Monday, uh, is your wallet ready for the Super Bowl? I want to bring in nonpoliticalnews.com founder Vera Gibbons with us. Uh, what kind of what kind of economic um, hit we're talking about here? Oh, in terms of lost productivity, <laughs> two point five billion in lost really? productivity on Monday. This is from John. So Chandler. Monday's going to almost match the shutdown, right? It's going to be pretty bad. Yeah, that's people just calling in sick, not coming in at all. And then you get on top of that another one point seven billion, just people sitting around the cooler talking about the game, you know, killing time talking about the game. These are people going into the office but just talking about it. Or coming in late, an hour late, two hours late. And it, but and it's just really nothing you can do about it. Maybe if the NFL started the game earlier, though. But, I mean, other than that, people it's People stay up late, 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 eating and drinking. 100 million people expected to watch the game. 61 million of those at home or, you know, at a friend's house or a neighbor's. It's the number one at-home party event of the year. A lot of people went out specifically and bought TVs for the event. Obviously, you don't need one because you have nine <laughs> TVs at home. But... Five million TVs sold in anticipation of the big day, and of course, a lot of eating and drinking. It's you know we're talking What's about the overall five economics of it. What does it you know because with that lost productivity on Monday, do we make it up over the weekend? We do make it up. Yeah, I mean it sounds like a big number, but in and of itself, it's not a huge number for companies. It's not a huge number for the economy. But leading up to it, all the money we spend on food. I mean, the Super Bowl Sunday is the second largest day for food consumption, right after Thanksgiving. Five billion spent total, and a large portion of that on the chips, on the salsa, on the guacamole, on all of that stuff. Huge, 2,500 calories on average. <laughs> Is there any way we uh, we can look at this and, and once it's over the game, and you know, folks like you crunch the numbers to, to kind of get a feel, uh, consumer sentiment, where the economy is. You know, is this uh, will this when it's all said and done, uh, will this be a, even a better way to gauge where we are? As we head into a year with a lot of optimism, a strong stock market and a strong, you know, and, and, and so far, strong jobs numbers. Yeah, the sentiment's high. We got some more job, good, good job numbers today. The spending overall is not expected to be as high as it has been maybe last year, but it's still up there because people are feeling good. The market's doing well. When people feel good, they obviously spend more. So I think in general, we're looking at a pretty good feeling all around, which is going to result in good things. And, and you're the good feeling master. That's what I you am. work on, right? You know it, Charles. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> we appreciate it.